Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Some of you know in recent videos, I've been trying to make overpowered civilizations by combining different elements and bonuses and techs from existing ones. Now, while crafting civs can be fun as just a thought experiment, there were a ton of requests to see them in practice in the hands of the Extreme AI as a big free-for-all, just to see which one was really the best. It took a bit of work behind the scenes, but I've made it happen. You can see I'm using a few civilizations here as a baseline, and I've turned on full tech tree, which is going to wipe all of their civ bonuses. And then behind the scenes, I've added a bunch of triggers to give them a new set of techs and bonuses, reflecting what I think are the best combinations possible. I feel like we've basically found the next level beyond the extreme AI, and we now have the extreme AI with superpowers. With that, let's jump in. So first thing you'll notice here is that I'm going to be refereeing in the corner and I have a very important job, which is to make sure that the AIs are actually doing the strategies they should. So you notice in the corner here, I've just sent them a bunch of commands, basically telling each one individually, go for cavalry archers, go for cavalry, go for infantry, etc. And so that's just to encourage them to actually make use of their superpowers, so to speak. And you'll notice that even though we're starting in the dark age, they all have a building that is Again, just trying to push them in the direction that their sieve is supposed to go. So just to introduce them here, this first one is the overpowered monk sieve. Of course, you can see the monastery. And this is a change from, because I made a couple videos before talking line by line about why I picked these particular bonuses. And I won't do that again here. But I have made a few changes from that because they were more of a monk and siege civilization. And I thought for this, I should actually break it up so we have a specific monk sieve. And we have a specific siege civilization, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so the idea here is just to have maximum HP, super cheap monks that it can just spam for days and hopefully convert a lot of these other really powerful units that they're encountering. I'm a little worried about this civ early game, though, uh, because, you know, it takes a while to get up to Castle Age and get your monk numbers up. And so that would be the worry here is that you get attacked early. But that's always the worry in a free-for-all. And the next civilization is the Cavalry Civ. Again, I won't go through line by line, but the big change here is I changed their unique unit from the Lightus into the Cataphract, because as people pointed out, there's sort of this weird broken thing that happens when you have the half bonus damage, and you combine that with the Cataphract, they actually end up taking no bonus damage from any source. So even Halberdiers, no bonus damage against the Cataphract. And on top of all of it, they resist conversion, which is probably not what the Monks Civ wanted to see. And next up, we have the OP Cavalry Archer Civ. This is kind of a mix of Huns, Mongols, and Tatars. And you can see there, again, I won't go through all of it, but it's a lot of discounts, faster firing, and they receive less bonus damage, which is critical because Cavalry Archers take a ton of bonus damage from basically any trash unit or camels. They're just, that's kind of their big weakness. So hopefully that addresses it. And their unique unit is going to be the Mangadai, which combined with all of these stat buffs should be pretty amazing. So next, we're looking at the Archer Civ. We've got, uh, again, a bunch of discounts, more range, faster attack. What the Civ's really built around, though, is the Commander on tech, which makes their crossbow line only cost wood. And then we have a bunch of discounts on top of that, plus you also have a wood bonus. And basically, you have 34 wood for a crossbow that is doing plus 8 against buildings and has insane stats. So that's really what this is all based around. Now, the problem is they won't actually research Commander on, on their own. So in case you're wondering about that, the way I got around that is if the civilization has a castle and they're in the right age, then it's automatically researched for them. Because without that, I picked the Mayans here. The Mayan, the AI won't even check if it has Commander on available because that's not available to Mayans. So I did have to sort of work around with that. And that is built into the triggers. So you get these big power spikes in each new age. Next up, we have a siege civilization. And you can see there, it's just a bunch of siege bonuses. It basically fit everything siege related into this one sieve. Problem with this one that I'm a little nervous about is it's only really good in the late game. And up till, I mean, I, I guess you can make mangonels and stuff in early castle, but until the late game, they really don't have a lot going for them. So that could be a bit of an issue. And finally, last one here, we've got the infantry sieve. Again, this is sort of a combination of a lot of different sieves, but we got big discount, faster attack, more pierce armor which is crazy because that's going to apply to Eagle Warriors as well. And I did make one change here. I replaced Wheelbarrow with Faster Moving Infantry because I just think that we should be focusing on trying to make the most overpowered late game units possible. And I also replaced, actually based on comments, the Huskarl is now going to be the Kamiak. So I'm going to let them build up here for a little bit and we're just going to cut ahead as soon as we get through all this Dark Age stuff and we actually get into some action. 
Okay, we're already getting a bit of action here. Just a little after 11 minutes, we've got the infantry sieve is sending forward some militia here to try to take out the siege workshop. Uh, this is pretty meta strategy. So basically, I think what the infantry sieve's thinking here is if I take out that special building, then the Ethiopian or the siege sieve won't know what strategy it's supposed to do. So it's probably going to do the wrong strategy. So that's actually pretty big brain stuff here from the green AI. I'll also put this up so you can see what all those were again. Because it's kind of hard to keep track. Oh, nice. Okay, so the infantry sieve has immediately hit the next age. We get the free pierce armor. And wow, first blood. Just like that. And another villager is coming in to offer. Nope. Okay. That we're just offering up villagers here for free. I do like that the seed civilization is going fast castle. You can tell with the building it's, it's made. It's not interested in fighting at all in this age. And oh, nice. Smart defensive tower. Yeah, so remember that they are also uh, much cheaper here as well. So they're attacking faster. They have the Pierce armor and free upgrades. It's just, it's a lot of things working all together. And we even have the Archer Civilization coming in with uh, Skirmishers, which is kind of weird. Yeah, the Skirmishers actually aren't really going to get any bonuses that I can think of off the top of my head. But really unfortunate here for the Siege Civilization that they're kind of getting double teamed here. And these Skirmishers are not going to do very much against these Man at Arms. And even denying that tower, nice. Man, I actually feel kind of bad here for the Seed Civ. So this is actually a big investment here by the Infantry Civ. That they're going so heavily into Men at Arms and not really getting a lot of damage done. I mean, they are kicking that one player off gold. Mm, actually, the Seed Civ doesn't have another source of gold. Are they able to go up? Okay, they do have enough gold that they can go up to the next stage. They're just really short on food at the moment. Okay, and I've also had to give another little hint to the Archer Civ. So I told it to go for crossbows. And we'll see, that might also push it to go up to the next stage, which I think would be the right strategy. We're also getting the Monk Civ going out with some infantry. Okay. Uh, I don't mind that. I think it just probably went for some militia in the Dark Age, upgraded them. A couple of spears, maybe already knows that this is a cavalry Civ. You know, this is actually a pretty... Pretty effective when you get enough of these men at arms. I mean, you can take out some buildings here. And skirmishers are the totally wrong wrong unit here. So they don't have to really be too afraid of that. Okay, so let's take a look. We got the archer civ. Not really going up to the next age. We got the cavalry archer civ with four archery ranges. What? <laughs> okay. And already castle age though. That's why. And already making all three archery ranges. Or I guess they've got four, but. Wow, already coming up with cavalry archers from all of them. That is awesome to see. I wasn't actually sure they were going to go for that. And we've got a little bit of fighting here, fighting off these spearmen. And these villagers should be fine here. There's enough of them. Spearmen aren't that threatening to villagers. And so our cavalry civ is almost at castle age. Our monk civ, uh-oh, uh, is getting a little too invested here in feudal, I think. They need to go up to the next age so it can actually start making monks because they have to mass up early. And then our infantry civ, also very invested here in feudal, actually getting fought off here by the looks of it. Now we can already see the cavalry archers coming in. This is the worry with Grey making skirmishers, is it slows down your castle time and now you're getting outmassed. And these are faster firing, cheaper cavalry archers, mind you. And the monk civ, still a little confused about what it's supposed to be doing. It seems to be going really heavily for men at arms. I, I mean, if you want to know why, it's because it's Aztecs. It thinks it's an infantry slash monk civ. And I'm just trying to encourage it to do the monk part, but it's tough. Without actually going back and, and programming the AIs from scratch, and they're just going to do kind of weird things for a while. But hopefully the late game, they'll sort it all out. Okay, so this is actually going to be a decent number of cavalry archers here. Uh, unfortunately, they are doing, what, just one damage? Yeah, per shot to these buildings. So these are actually pretty good arrow fodder if you're the archer civ here, as long as they actually have wood. They actually don't have a wood source at the moment. And our streaming and archers, oh, this is what you hate to see. Is <laughs> just streaming archers. And meanwhile, infantry civ still applying pressure here. Uh, have we gone up? All right, please tell me you've clicked up. Okay. The problem is that Siege isn't even a good way to deal with men-at-arms at all, even if 
uh, you do get up to the next stage. Hmm. Okay. We'll see what happens there. And finally making crossmen. That's good. That's what they should be making. Uh, although they don't get the commander on tech yet, they have to build a castle first, and then they'll instantly get the commander on tech, so it doesn't cost them gold anymore. And let's check in on the cavalry civilization, which I feel like hasn't really done anything so far. We've got a couple of stables, but not really making anything yet. Still no monks yet, they'll just hit castle age, so I guess that might take a little bit. I actually like crossbows here, I think that's the right response anyway to cavalry archers. And especially when you've got the extra range, you've got 5 plus 3 range, they've got 4 plus 2 range. Like you can see, you can really outrange them quite a bit. And no armor upgrades yet for those either, so these crossbowmen should actually do quite well. And now we're up to long swordsmen with 1 plus 3 pierce armor, you can see how that adds up. And then of course the faster attack and discount as well. Uh, it's really too bad actually the infantry civ lost so many uh, other men at arms earlier. I didn't actually see how they all died. I think largely a town center fire. Because you can see they're not always smart about wandering under the town center. Well, I like the mines were able to fight that off. And actually doing it with the proper unit. So now they've actually got a, a mass of crossbows. Which is going to be pretty sweet. And as soon as they get a castle up, that should actually be pretty good. And now our infantry civ coming forward with a lot of siege. Unfortunately, uh, it's so cruel. The, uh, the siege civilization is actually going to be killed largely by siege. Uh, if they don't do something about this, because that's a lot of... And a town center in the face. Ouch. That's that's a little mean. All right, and finally starting to see some monks. This is what I like to see. I want to see some mass conversions here with the AI's micro. And we have a ton of knights coming out. Okay, so it's good that we're actually starting to get knights going. And they're actually the score lead. The cavalry civ. Okay, good. I still think it's way too early. I think Gray got raided pretty hard there, was off wood for a while, and which unfortunately is actually the most important resource for them. Okay, so they're now actually taking wood over there. Okay, so they're they're coming back and they're settling, but I think they need to mass up their numbers here before they do anything else. And I, yeah, our seed sieve, it's kind of sad that the newest sieve I made is actually the first one that's going to die here. I think it's just a little bit too focused on late game and also got targeted by two different civilizations. So unfortunate, but I think our Siege Civ is already going to be out. And we're not even at 30 minutes here yet. At a certain point here, uh, I'm actually going to have to step in. And so it's rebuilding its base. At a certain point though, the AIs just get hung up on buildings and stuff, so I'm just going to... Uh, get rid of, like, torpedo them and just destroy their buildings so that, you know, we don't have to watch the infantry civ slowly dismantle their base over the next 10 minutes. Yeah, you got the cavalry archer numbers back up. That's nice to see. I like they got the armor upgrade as well. It's kind of lacking there, considering they were up against archers. Oh, man. This is it. Monks, prepare to defend your town. Dude, what's nice is these are really good knights too. These are 140 HP because they have 20% more HP, which is based on their 100 HP baseline, plus they have bloodlines on top of that. And we're starting to see a few monks gathering up here. And then we've got like five going on at once. And you can see, yeah, we're starting to, starting to get some knights here for yellow who shouldn't actually have access to knights. So four knights there. That's some nice conversions. And some pikes as well. They're actually going to do some work here. Although I guess the... Uh, knight is only going to take half the bonus damage. Okay, so successful defense from the monks. That's good. I was actually kind of worried about them in Castle Age. So that's nice to see. I'm really surprised Cavalry Archers here are actually winning. I would have thought Mass Crossbow there. But considering all of the stat buffs they had, I thought the Mass Crossbow were going to be able to take them out. And, well, I mean, if you just stand there and get shot, that's... <laughs> I mean, you guys had that coming. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like the uh, Archer Civ here is constantly under pressure. I'm a little worried over here as well that these monks aren't going to have time to recharge between attacks, but so far they've got all their faith back, so that's good. You can see they've got 75 HP, which is pretty solid. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I It must have just placed those. That's really weird. Why would it place them so far away? Huh. Okay. I'm starting to get some alarms here. 
Okay, so any second here, I think when this goes down, or when this is very obviously about to go down, I'm actually just going to take out the sieve, because they're just distracting one of the players at this point. I mean, they don't really have a chance to get back in it. Here, cavalry sieve must almost be up to Imperial. Yeah, halfway to Imperial by 32 minutes. I mean, that's solid, especially after making so many knights and siege. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of eco bonuses helping him out along the way. And, I mean, now the town center is taken out. I, This is just, you know, the infantry sibs is going to chase them around forever. They don't really have a chance to come back. I mean, no resources, nothing's being produced. So, I call it as a referee. I say, you know what, Seed Civ, you're out. You got no chance to come back. So, Seed Civ is gone. Again, kind of unfortunate. <laughs> that was the one I made just for this game. But I think a little bit too late game focused. And how many monks is this, actually? Okay, just seven monks? That's all you got? Eight monks, okay. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough. Oh, and mass in the light cavalry. Okay. So, this is going to be an interesting fight. We've got a lot of monks and pikes against light cavalry, which counter the monks, have some conversion resistance on top of just the civilization's resistance. But I think they are going to get taken down by pikemen. So if we can be pretty good about microing uh, and just making sure we're grabbing knights with the monks and pikemen against light cav, though not throwing them in in small numbers, this is a huge fight actually. This could completely determine this side of the map. I can see a little bit of slide stepping here. Okay, all right, not bad. We actually managed, I say we as if I'm cheering for these guys, but actually managing to steal a lot of light cavalry there. And that's not just one less for your opponent, that's one more for you. So that's almost like two units. And again, forcing him back with nothing but monks. Uh, this is bad though. I, I mean, more HP or not. Oh. Yeah, there's still some more glitches with the AI, which is really unfortunate because they only had like eight monks there. See, this could have gone so differently if instead of just <laughs> very slowly sliding under the town center getting hit there, they'd actually converted those mangonels. That would have been that would have been massive. Imagine four yellow mangonels here. Or I guess onagers now. I already upgraded them. And this is not good. Not good. What have we got? Two monks left. Not good. And what a cavalry archer. Cavalry archer sieve decided that they're now also a knight sieve. And also a crossbow sieve and also a pike sieve. So they're losing a little bit of focus here on what they're actually supposed to be making. And so I sent them a little message here to say, uh, no, remember cavalry archers is your thing. And it basically says, uh, no. <laughs> so... It's just kind of doing its own thing now. Oh, nice. We're starting to see Elite Cataphract. So because they're Imperial, they are getting the plus 5 from Fremba. And we're actually still missing an attack upgrade. This is going to be 12 plus 9. And 200 HP. A Paladin's one, uh, 180. So, and even the Frank Paladin is 192. So this is tough in the Paladin. Although, less Pierce Armor. Okay, I would just like to see you guys get a castle here, because I want to start seeing... Let's get up to Imperial, let's demolish some buildings. Uh, the Archer Civ is not really involved here. Yeah, I'm losing a little bit of confidence in the monk ability to actually fight this stuff off. It's not making monks anymore. Uh, we're not even really making anything anymore. Uh, we've only got nine military units. have 127 economy. Uh, there's no reason we can't be making more units here. By getting pretty heavily raided. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see. I'm not feeling great about that. And we're seeing the Eagle Warriors coming out now. Yeah, with 4 plus 7 Pierce Armor. That's crazy. And we're also getting some of the Champions with 8 Melee Armor, 7 Pierce Armor. And it doesn't look like their attack's that great, but they're attacking 33% faster. So over time, it's going to add up to a lot. And this is a big problem. If what that was at like 95% or better, and they just destroyed it because when they get the castle, they get their unique tax, and so now they're starting another castle when it was 95% there. 
that's bad because that means that they're not going to be getting. Uh, what do they're missing out on Commander on, and they're also missing out on Obsidian arrows, which I guess wouldn't help too much here because these Eagle Warriors are just shredding everything. Meanwhile, uh, okay, stabilizing again a little bit. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see so the monks, it's that conversion resistance just too good. You're not going to be able to steal units one on one. Which means I think the Monk Civ's in a tough spot, and definitely the Archer Civ is in a really bad spot right now. The problem is you can't... Like, what are you going to tech into? You're going to tech into two-handed swordsmen and, <laughs> you know, and fight the ultimate infantry Civ that's getting these for super cheap. So I think Archer Civ's kind of dead here. And what are the what are the cavalry archers? So finally making Mangadai. That's good. I can't remember. I think I might have sent them a message at one point. Because they weren't going to make cavalry archers anymore. I sent them a message just to make their unique unit. Which, I mean, you would make Mangadai at this point anyway. You've got crazy stats. That's 20 more HP than usual. You're going to have an extra attack and extra range. It's, yeah, it's going to be pretty good. And even starting to threaten the cavalry civ. I think the cavalry civ on paper here is the strongest civilization, or at least that elite cataphract on paper is the strongest unit. Still haven't managed to get a castle. I mean, they were at 90 something percent on that last castle that they deleted. But even with that castle, I don't think that's going to change anything here at this point. It's just, they're gutted. What have we got left for population? 30 villagers with no resources. Yeah. Not good. And is this all the upgrades? Can't remember. Is this gonna get any higher? I don't think so. No, that's that's their maximum stats, but that's pretty good against any archer civ. And the nice thing is, this is great against arrows and archers. You've also got uh, the uh, champion line, which and even arguably the halberdier line as alternatives, depending on what you're up against. Yeah, I think I don't think the monk civ is ready for this. The eagles are coming. And this is going to end pretty poorly, I think, for the Monk Civ. They just have nothing here. Like, yeah, your two-handed swordsman, I'm pretty sure one of these Eagle Warriors can take him out. Well, definitely got a group of them like that, yep. And meanwhile, the Cavalry Archer Civ, this is nice to see. I was worried they were going to get taken out too early. And actually applying a lot of pressure here to the Cavalry Civ. Because even if you're taking less bonus damage, it's still, it's a lot of arrows. And it's just, it's a lot of damage that you're going to be taking. And even managing the 2 versus 1 here, also going after the Archer player, who's now going for Plumed Archers. I don't like that. I don't think that's a better unit, but that's just AI doing AI things. Because even though it, it does have massive discounts and stuff, it still does cost gold, and their crossbow line doesn't. Probably won't actually matter that much at this point, though. Yeah, I think Infantry Civ has basically killed Monk Civ. <laughs> just like the whole base is gone. We still have the Monastery. So, there's a chance. We've got one monk <laughs> attempting to convert a mining camp. Okay. Well, I mean, to be fair, if you can then, if that villager hangs around long enough, you can grab a villager and start mining some stone, I guess. Yeah, I think Archer Civ is dead. I don't want to call it yet because we've got still a castle. You still got a castle in a town center. You got some military buildings. Maybe a little early to call it, but I think we're definitely getting there. The thing is, this is actually giving us some precious time for the Cavalry Civ to rebuild. So, Red here, unfortunately, is focusing on the wrong things. And I guess because it doesn't have any food. So, that explains it. They actually don't have any sort of discount on the Elite Cataphracts. And still didn't even get that last attack upgrade. So, you can see they've really been struggling for resources here. And kind of lucky to have yellow as a bit of a buffer, even though yellow is very quickly going down to green. And finally, this castle might even be going down. So I think the problem for red is that they're in between the two. It's, it seems unlikely that orange is going to send their units all the way across the map, and green is going to send their units all the way across the map. So I think while on paper, red has an amazing answer to the Elite Eagle Warriors, and that the Cataphract does extra damage to them and has just incredible stats, and doesn't even have to worry about the extra Pierce Armor. I mean, Red has a great answer to these. I think Red's just going to be up against just 2 versus 1, and unfortunately going to lose just because of that. Uh, we're going to have to call it here, I think, 
with yellow, because yellow doesn't even have a monastery anymore, and that's kind of their win condition. So, yellow's out, monks have gone, although did better than I thought they might, or I was afraid they were going to die to the first hint of aggression. I actually managed to use the monks to hold off the first few waves of attack from red, so that was nice to see. And red's got to come up with a plan here quick, or they're going to be two versus one, although it actually looks like green is going for orange. Oh, I also decided that uh, their castle went down, their town center was going to go down. Decided, yeah, Archer Civ is out too. And red here just like, please don't notice me, green. Please don't notice me. As green sending all the infantry across the map. And this is one of those funny things where while red has a great answer to green, orange does not. I mean, all these arrows are doing basically nothing. And once they send enough units over, I don't know, actually this is a pretty big... Okay, I don't want to speak too soon. I think they they have some units here. And they're actually doing a, a decent job handling these. The problem is just there's so many arrows that are all doing one damage. Okay, you know, I might have spoken a little bit too soon. It, I think the real problem here is that green's units are so cheap. I, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's like... 13 food and 20 something, no it can't be 20 something, it'd be like 30 something gold, like 13 food, 37 gold maybe. For eagle warriors that take almost no damage. Okay, so we are getting another wave here of infantry coming in. Oh, and we're getting the wave of siege rams. I think that's going to do it. I really think the elite eagle warriors here are the secret weapon. 13 food and either 33 or 34 gold, I think, which is just insane. Like, once you apply the goth discount to them, these units are so cheap to replace, and green has so much gold around the map that they can go grab. <laughs> Red just like, don't notice me. Red, what are you doing? No, no, no. You need to hide. You need to build up your numbers here. So, I'm actually starting to get 42 on food again, plus around 20 on gold. Like, this is decent. You actually just need these numbers to be built up a little bit. And it's funny, we have a little triangle thing happening, where green is actually not... Green is very effective against orange. Because this is... We have nothing but arrows, and we have nothing but a unit that takes almost no damage from arrows. I actually think orange is pretty good against red. And I think red is actually really good against green, because the cataphract is so insane against infantry. So red should just chill here for a little bit not draw any attention, and maybe green will just kill orange for him. Although, apparently that's not happening. Green seems to have changed his mind, and is now just going to two versus one, everybody. And this is what I want to see. How do these elite cataphracts actually hold up here? I mean, they should do really, really good here. And we even have some decent numbers. I mean, how much damage are we taking? So 132 might take take some damage here. So we're taking like five damage per hit from some of these units, like halberdiers, which is just crazy. You're taking like 40 hits from halberdiers with each elite cataphract. Now they don't have trample damage, so this kind of fight actually isn't all that good for them. Because uh, yeah, I didn't give them logistica, which in retrospect, well it's either logistica or ferimba for plus five more attack, so I don't know. You could, uh, you could make an argument for both. But you can see, just cleaning up all these infantry units with really just a handful of cataphracts, even holding back a bunch of them. Yeah, so here's the problem. The problem is that I think red is going to win that fight against green eventually. The problem is that now we've got all these Mangadai hanging out here. And they're obviously not going to go for green. Because AI doesn't hold a grudge like that. It's going to attack red because red's closer. And so now red's going to be attacked on two fronts. Again, I think they would win this fight. It's a tough one. But every single one of these cataphracts is going to take out 5-6 of Green's units. Uh, but yeah, you've got no answer to this. And cataphracts are not a good answer to this because they have 13 attack on the Mangadai. And you have 5 armor, so you're still taking 8 damage with every arrow. You're taking more damage from a Mangadai shot than you are from a Halberdier. Which is kind of funny as a cavalry unit to say. Yeah, so you can see all these elite cataphracts are just going down really quickly. Almost trading one for one, I would say. Which is not what you want. 
when you're also being attacked on the other side. And just like that, man, red went down fast. Which is funny, I think they were holding just fine against green. But the manga die. So now we need to start thinking, okay, well between green and orange, who counters whom here? And the problem is that there's so much pierce armor. I mean, not on the Kamiak. The Kamiak's actually not a great unit at all because a lot of the bonuses for the infantry civs don't apply to their unique unit. It applies to barracks units, which is why we actually get way better stats on the Eagle Warriors. So if green goes for nothing but Kamiaks, uh, even then, uh, I don't know, they can still swarm you. I think the problem is green can just swarm too easily. And even if you're taking half the bonus damage, you're still taking a lot of damage from these units. Alright, this is starting to be a lot of, uh, a lot of spam, of alarms. I'm trying to be conscious of that. Yeah, we're even getting Siege in here. <laughs> Random Mangonel in there. See, that's just going to damage your own units more. No, no, no Mangonels. Just, yeah, don't do it. So at some point here, I'm going to have to take red out of this game. Because uh, I don't really have a chance to come back in it. The... The fight is between the other two at this point, and they're just going to get hung up on destroying Red's buildings. So, I'm not sure at what point exactly I'll do that here, but that's going to happen pretty soon. Alright, I think with this castle going down, I think we have to call it. I mean, what hope does Red really have of coming back here? So, Red's out, and we're down to... Actually, not two civs I would have picked at the beginning. The Cavalry Archer, which, again, I was really worried about. I knew they were really good late game. And the Infantry Civ, which is actually really surprising. Yeah, I would have thought the Cavalry Civ would have completely taken them out, but obviously the game's gone a little bit differently. And this is a lot of units, man. And a lot of really good units. Even the Halberdier have seven Pierce Armor. Being a little bit distracting what units it's making as well. I'm actually wondering what's the gold situation. Yeah, hmm. That can be a concern as well. Even though they are heavily discounted, they still do cost gold. They're so gonna need to secure some gold to make these, uh, the Mangadai. And you're already seeing them rely on uh, skirmishers, which have, what, seven attack? And all these have seven pierce armor. <laughs> so, yeah, uh-oh. Okay, well the Kamiux are here, and they're gonna try to take out this castle, basically with Kamiux. Oh, I guess we have a few traps. Okay, this castle's gonna go down. And after that, I mean, what has Orange got? Building another castle in the back. We have another one. Obviously, castle is really important, so you can make Mangadai. At this point, it's just a matter of completely being outmassed. So let's speed it along and see if there's any last-minute surprises here. Yeah, as soon as they start calling out for help. That's kind of my signal there in trouble. I mean, there was nothing left, so nicely played. OP Infantry Civ I ends up winning it, and wait, what? I'm switching sides. Fare thee well, loser. I and my troops can easily vanquish seven times your number. Wait, you're betraying me? I created you, and I can destroy you. Well, aside from the betrayal there at the end from the infantry civ, uh, that was actually a really successful test. And basically all of them, except I guess kind of the siege civ, we did see at least a glimpse of what the civ is trying to do in the way that they were built, which at the end of the day is what I was going for. Now, before I get asked, unfortunately, this is not a mod that I can share and just put up online with you guys, or I definitely would have. This was all done with triggers in the scenario editor. But that said, I know there's at least one mod out there that takes at least some of these civs and has actually made them into a mod so that you can actually play them and you get the proper bonuses and everything. So if you are interested in playing it, you can either do it with triggers or you can take a look for one of those mods. But that's going to be all for this one and hopefully you guys found that game entertaining. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.